Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is David Rogo Gamers, and today we're going to be working on this PlayStation 4 game console with water damage that's not allowing the Blu ray drive to function correctly. So let's go over to the upper cam and see what we got going on with this one. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have a X, well, sorry, a PS4 fat model. Now, this is the one where we have the matte black on both of the sides. That's what I just call it. Um, where it actually has the Blu-ray side of the board actually on the motherboard versus the uh, ones with the glossy black has a separate PCB board for your Renaissance chip, your drive motor and everything. So um, customer brought it into one of our store locations and just simply said um, the console is not it's not reading any of this. So they brought it here. Um, obviously, the first thing on my mind is, OK, it's just a simple laser repair. Well, uh, the drive wasn't working correctly at all. As soon as I sit that and the wave was moving, first thing that came to my mind was, like, okay, it's probably water damage. And as soon as I got it down to the motherboard, I saw this and knew exactly what was going on. Now, this chip I see right here is what controls your drive motor. And you see what this is all covered up right here. You see over here, we have um, liquid damage over here. So... We're going to have to replace this over here and get this done. The crazy thing is I've been working on liquid damages left and right. And when customers drop it off, they don't tell you, hey, it has liquid damage. They just say, um, oh, it just won't power on or whatever. You get down. So it's like, well, this is why it won't power it on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's always crazy working with this stuff. But we, we should be able to get this repaired with no issue so let's get started on this. All right. So, yeah, I just I just want to get this done as quick as possible. We still have huge backlog we're about three weeks out on our repairs right now and we have still between 300 to 400 game consoles to get through i want to say this lighting right here should work so yeah that should work so um as you can see we have this chip right here all these components right here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace all of this, right? So I'm going to take my 8341 no clear flux. I'm going to apply it across the IC so we can be able to quickly lift that, that, and I'm just lifting all of this. I'm going to take all this off. I know a lot of time people will spend time reading everything and yeah, we could do that. Um, but I'm, you'll spend more time reading to anything. My main thing with working on these repairs is being as quick and as efficient as possible. Um, like I said, we get we got so many repairs and not just from people coming in our stores, but people shipping in our game consoles. People will watch our videos to say, oh yeah, this guy knows what he's doing and will ship it in to us. So um, we get flooded with a bunch of them. <coughs> Which is actually a a blessing and a curse too. The thing is, if you got your own repair shop and if you're pulling in a lot of repairs or even just a tiny bit of repairs, I'm pretty sure you've dealt with people that just get very, very impatient. And unfortunately, that's something we have to deal with as well. Even though we tell people, hey, this is how long it's going to take, you know, somebody will call, they'll drop it off like, you know, three days before and then we'll tell our employees to tell them hey you know it's going to take about three weeks they'll totally just ignore that they'll call like three four days later and say hey is it done <laughs> you know so um people would just totally ignore how long it's going to take so that's why it becomes a blessing to curse because it takes a little bit longer to get stuff done but it's a blessing because a lot of people they'll, they'll they see the work they know um what you can and can't do so they know that you can be able to get there thing repaired. All right, so let's go back and check over our work. All right, so we got this side done and we're gonna obviously move over to the other side, whatever some of that water damage on that other side. Uh, once we're done with this section of the board, and I have a donor board laying right next to me, so it'll be pretty easy and quick to get through this. Now, what I'm doing right now is I got my toothbrush. I dipped it in some 99% IPA. 
and I'm just going through and I'm just cleaning this whole section of the board. And look what we have right here. Crap, I think that might be a rip pad down there. I think that pad might. And that's what I was in fear of because, unfortunately, uh, a lot of times when you're dealing with liquid damage, you're dealing with possible rip traces. All right, so look how much better this area looks now, right? Um, just some that 99% IPA, that toothbrush. You know, I'm going to be honest, guys. If you're still stuck on Q-tips, I feel bad for you if you're cleaning something up like this with a Q-tip. So, let's see. I think this, we would definitely need another trace right here. So, all right, guys. So, I have my small little Jumel right here. This is a MA Ant D1 drill. This is what I use to create new traces. So I just turn it on. And we're going to just get that out the way. All right, so that should be good enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clean this area. Right, so... That looks good. So that area is clean and good. That should be good enough to create a pad. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my 8341 No Clean Flux. Everything that I use is down below in the description besides this Dremel. Um, I couldn't find this on Amazon. I actually had to buy this off of AliExpress. So I couldn't find it on there, but I am going to apply some flux right there. I got my hackle solder iron heating up right now. We're gonna take our low melt solder and we're just gonna apply a little bit of solder to the trace that we just created. So when we go on ahead and we put the new IC on there, we'll be able to take the copper wire and get it directly to the IC. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, this is the size gauge I got. It's a 34 um, AWG. Hopefully this is small enough for it, but we'll find out here soon. So let's go back in, get that created. Actually, while I'm at it too, I got to apply low melt solder throughout this whole header. So I'm just going to put solder through everything so we can go through everything and just do all that in one swoop. That looks fine right there. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take um, my donor motherboard with a good um, drive motor. Well, it should have a good drive motor in it. I'm going to take all of this and we're going to put it on this board. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the IC itself first. All right, I want to say that should be everything. That should be everything that needed to be replaced. We didn't need to replace this bottom cap right here because I didn't have any liquid on it. Um, and yeah, so everything is in place. Everything looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on ahead and check out this IC because... I want to get that trace put up there. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my solder iron and I'm going to go around it. And we're going to make sure all the pads are correct, correctly touching the IC. All right, so see if I can be able to get this trace in there. I'm going to apply some flux. On there just like that I'm gonna take my solder iron and I'm gonna tin my solder tip by touching the solder roll got my tweezer on the insulated copper wire 
The type of insulated copper wire I use is in the description below. So let's try to get this put on. All right, so it looks like we got that in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Q-tip, dip it in some 99% IPA, and we're gonna clean around it so we can get a better view on that. And I gotta hold it at this angle, that's why it's not on the desk, so I can try to see clearly. So look at that, that looks good. That looks good right there. We can see we got a direct connection with the IC onto that pad and we are good. So um, now we're gonna, I'm gonna take my wire clippers. I'm gonna clip that off. So let's go back onto the microscope and let's get that clipped off. All right, so that looks good. Now, what I'm gonna do is, eh, which really there's not a huge need to even do this, but I, I'm just gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna take my um, solder mask. If you want some of this stuff too, link is down below in the description. If you want to just protect your trace work, I take, and that's a little bit way too much. I'm gonna take some of that out. So I'm just gonna take my flathead and I'm just gonna just simply tap it. Let me move this up a little bit. Just like that. And now we have that, at least that line protected. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my UV light I'm gonna go to cure it. Should take about 30 seconds, so let's get that done. That's secure. That is in place. So that is a good trace as that was put in place. We was able to put the um, solder mask on it just to make sure that's protected just in case if they spill liquids inside of this again. So now let's check the other side of that board. I think we should be good on that side right there. I don't think there's anything else we need to mess with. So let's go to the other side and let's see what it looks like over here. So up here's where we had the other small amount of liquid damage. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. All right, cool. So that looks a lot better. And we could tell this side definitely took a hit on some damage. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six components. Um, now, a lot of people would just leave that here and just say, you know what? I'll just leave it there. Since I got a ton of donor boards, I'm just going to just get rid of that. So gonna turn back on my fume extractor we're gonna we're gonna remove those components and i'm gonna take it off my donor board and put it um, back on there so let's get that done all right so we got all of them removed now let's get them replaced So that looks a lot better and now we can go on ahead and clean that because we are finally done with that side of the board and I think it's time to test as long as the trace I put in there holds up and as long as all those solder pads over there are soldered correctly this should work, so let's go back over to microscope. You see all that looks good over there. Everything over here looks great. 
all good components trace right there is in place so i think we're we're ready to test so let's go on ahead and get this thing put partially back together and see what we got all right so fingers crossed got my copy of tony hawk let's try to insert it sounds a lot better going in it was very rough and the disc is actually spinning oh it's, I can hear it working. I can hear it working because it it would go in, but it would sound very rough, like the drive motor was gone out. And then once it get in there, it just would just make all this eh, 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 and just all this crazy noise. So let's see what we could get. Let's see if it's actually reading this game. There we go. There we have it. That's uh that, that was a this is a fun one. This is a fun water damage console to work on. So as you guys can see. Um just because your console may be water damaged doesn't mean that it's just completely lost. So um, we're going to have a very happy customer with this one. And I'm going to also let them know, like, hey, you guys did have a crazy amount of water damage on there as well. Because sometimes people just don't know. I've seen a lot of times where parents, they their kids would just come up to us and say, hey, this doesn't turn on or it doesn't work or whatever. They would bring it to us and they'd be calling and say, yeah, it had liquid damage. You're just like, what? You know, we didn't know that. And it's just like, yeah, you know. For whatever reason, the kid don't want to tell us, but I have a good reason on why they wouldn't want to tell their parents. But um, so, yeah, that's, that's a good repair in the books. If you guys did like this video, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, what I could have did better or what you want to see me repair, go ahead and leave a comment down below in the, in the comments. And also subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. But besides that, I hope to see you guys on the flip side and I'll catch you guys on the next video. See ya.